Hello, my fellow scientists. Tonight, I want to give you a very brief update on the all-iron battery. For those who might be new here, the all-iron battery is a project that's been going on in this lab for almost two years, where we attempt to build an iron battery using iron metal as the anode and iron-3 ferric iron as the cathode. And we've been modestly successful, but the big problem has been that we just haven't been able to get enough power from the battery. We've got energy density that's acceptable, but getting energy quickly, that is to say high power, has been problematic. The way we have overcome that is to use lots of conductive carbon, and I've been trying to simplify the chemistry in order to make it, well, more friendly both for folks who might want to try to build it themselves, and also maybe someday for manufacturing. Last time I talked about the iron battery, a link in the description by the way, I showed a method of crashing iron sulfate using sodium hydroxide. This gave very decent power density. Uh, even after only a few seconds of charging, uh, it was able to discharge at a few milliamps. At full charge, after overnight charging, it held one volt of potential and was able to discharge much more quickly, almost 10 milliamps. Uh, it's a decent cell compared to what we've been used to from Iron Battery 1.0, the chemistry we published. Uh, this is the cell in question, and unfortunately that cell really didn't hold up very well. It dried out. If you watch that video again, you'll see that the paper extends beyond the boundaries of the chemistry, and that may actually be carrying water out of the cell, which would be drying it out. Uh, it's, it's not ideal, and we'd like to get away from <laughs> this construction method into something that's better sealed. And so we're working on that in parallel with trying to improve the chemistry. It's not clear how stable this chemistry is when we've rebuilt the cell in a little better form factor. Uh, it's still not as stable as we'd like. We're working on additives that might correct that. That's all still very tentative, though. So do stay tuned. We're going to keep updating on the iron battery as we make progress. Uh, in other news, I have been updating PeterAllenLab.com. I try to get that updated every week as well. So if you like the kind of thing we do here, you can check out the kind of things I like to read, the kind of things I like to uh, keep my eye on over there at the blog. This week, I put up a little note about uh, greenhouses. So there's a, a paper came that came out that talked about using the unwanted light from plants to power the greenhouse electrically. So if you have solar panels that pass the blue and the red part of the spectrum and absorb the green part of the spectrum that plants don't really want, then you could use the electricity you generate to run the fans and the pumps that operate the greenhouse while letting the plants live. And this makes for a real interesting mathematical problem. How much of that green light can you steal before you start hurting the plants inside the greenhouse. So they went through a lot of analysis, and I just love the imaginative ideas that came out of it. Uh, there's even a rendering of the purple greenhouse that results, right? Because if you take all the green light, you end up with red and blue light being reflected, and so you have a purple greenhouse. Uh, it's, it's a fun idea. I have a whole bunch of other links if you like to check that out. Also, a bunch of comics I think are fun. Can't really share comics on the vlog because I don't want to post someone else's material, but if they tweet about it, then I don't mind sharing it with, with folks who want to read that. And science comics and uh, science fiction comics always amuse me. So if you want to check that out, uh, it's peterallenlab.com. In the meantime, we will be updating next week on further results right here in the Allen Lab.